Daniel Dubois moves to 8-0 with 8 KOs with a 5th round TKO victory over Tom Little. This, for me, was Daniel Dubois' best performance to date as a professional by far. In fact, this was Daniel Dubois' best performance that I've ever seen. Even, you know, going back, looking at his amateur fights that I've watched. This was Dubois at his very best, or certainly the best I've seen of him so far. He passed a couple of tests for me. He ticked a couple of boxes. Tom Little was never going to test Daniel Dubois from a skill or ability point of view. Uh, my question was, how would Daniel Dubois hold up mentally against a very antagonistic opponent in Tom Little, a guy who was doing everything, pulling out all the stops to try and get under Daniel Dubois' skin? Uh, would Daniel Dubois go in there and fight angry? and empty the tank early on and gas out? Uh, would he fight an emotional fight or would he be able to keep his composure and remain disciplined? And the latter was certainly the case. Daniel Dubois fought a very controlled, disciplined fight. He applied steady pressure, but nothing silly. Very, very poised and used his jab very effectively. And when he got Tom Little against the ropes, that's when he started unloading. Uh, if there is one criticism that I do have of Dubois here. And it, you know, it's not really a criticism, but it, it might be a slight weakness of Dubois. It's that the only time he really unloaded any serious punches on Tom Little was when he backed him to the ropes. In the middle of the ring, Dubois didn't do much other than jab and straight right hand. And from a strategic point of view, that might be a good thing, okay, for this particular fight. But I'm looking at Daniel Dubois going forward in his career. Does he need a stationary target in order to unload shots? You know, flurries of punches. Can he do it in the middle of the ring or does he need you to be stationary on the ropes before he can get a lot of shots off? Uh, that is a question because if you've got a guy who can stay off the ropes, use head movement, move left and right, potentially Dubois could struggle. You know, we'll look at that going forward. But anyway, that's a technical issue. You know, that's maybe a speed issue and whatnot. Uh, but with regards to the test that he passed in this fight, the mental test, he passed it with flying colors. Excellent work from Daniel Dubois. And again, when he did get Tom Little on the ropes, he was vicious. I saw a noticeable improvement in hand speed. I saw excellent punch placement, excellent punch variety from Daniel Dubois go into the head and body and of course in the fourth round I believe it was the fourth yes he dropped Tom Little with a tremendous left hand to the body and you know caught him right in the floating rib Tom Little did very well to get up from a punch like that because you know that punch nearly snapped him in half a very very good shot I got up never actually managed to seriously hurt Tom Little with a head shot uh, but did get him out of there with, or sorry, did drop him with that body shot and seriously hurt him with that. Tom Little, a very tough guy, a very brave guy, was upset with the referee when it was called off. But I think it was maybe a slightly premature stoppage, but Tom Little hadn't won a round, <laughs> you know, and he was getting bludgeoned. And Tom Little was almost going into survival mode in the the fourth and the fifth. So, yeah, I can't complain too much about the stoppage, although it was maybe slightly premature. Uh, Daniel Dubois' performance, as I say, was his most impressive to date for me uh, because he passed the mental test. He didn't get flustered. He didn't go in there angry. He remained composed and went about his job in methodical fashion, broke down his opponent. Very, very good from Daniel Dubois. So onwards and upwards, this was only his eighth professional fight. Let's see who they match him up against next. Uh, his promoter, Frank Warren, was talking about a showdown with his stable mate, Nathan Gorman, you know, they're both promoted by Warren, obviously trained by different people, but in terms of the promotional umbrella, they're both under the same one. So, yeah, he was talking about Dubois versus Gorman next year, 2019. We'll see. Uh, I think someone had mentioned that Warren has previously said that Dubois and Gorman would happen in 2018. <laughs> now he's pushing it back to 2019. He was talking about filling out the O2 for Dubois Gorman. It's going to take a lot of work on Frank Warren's behalf. It's going to take a lot of work. 
in order to be filling out the O2 with anyone because uh, that O2 was virtually empty. <laughs> I'm sure most of you who saw the show would have noticed the O2 had n virtually nobody in it. Uh, so Warren's got a lot of work to, work to do there. So anyway, let me know how you felt about Daniel Dubois' performance. Were you as impressed as I was? Drop your comments in the comment section below. Who would you like to see him fight next? It's Hatman, I'm out.